Hey, Mark. What's going on? Hey, Dr. Kemka. I'm just looking at this EKG on a new patient I admitted. I think they're having an acute MI, and I'm pretty sure there's ST elevation. What do you think? Well, let me take a look. You know, I am worried about acute myocardial infarction in this patient. Let me call the cath lab, and then we'll discuss the ECG findings a little further. Great. ST elevation myocardial infarction, or a STEMI, is basically the complete occlusion of a coronary artery in the heart. And rapid identification of this can literally save your patient's heart muscle or their life. Now let's take a look at this on the form of an EKG. In the EKG here, we're going to be looking for one millimeter or more ST elevation in two or more consecutive leads. Hey, Dr. Kemka. Where should we be looking on the ST segment for the elevated portion? That's a great question, Mark. So we're looking for something called the J point, which is right here. Now, the J point is at the end of the QRS segment and at the onset of the ST segment. OK. And what are we comparing the J point to? So if the J point is here, we're going to compare the PR segment as our baseline, which is right here. OK. So one millimeter or more of ST elevation at the J point compared to the PR segment does the shape of the ST segment matter at all? That's actually extremely important. So you have many different reasons to have ST elevations. Some examples are early repolarization, left ventricular hypertrophy, or pericarditis. So how do we know that we're having acute occlusion of a coronary artery? So one, if I'm looking at the normal end of the J point right here, and if it's rising over one millimeter, and it's either horizontally going across, or if it's merging with the T wave and forming a convex or tombstone finding, that's more concerning for an ST elevation myocardial infarction. OK. So if that's convex, that means that this one in front of me is concave, and this would be less concerning for an MI. You got it. But always remember to find, clinically correlate these findings. OK. I think I understand ST elevation a little better. Let's talk about consecutive leads. Hey, Dr. Kemka, I heard you talking on rounds the other day about consecutive leads. What are those, and why are they important? Well, first of all, I'm impressed that you were actually listening on rounds. That's a first. Consecutive leads, or contiguous leads, are an ECG's version of the anatomic portions of the heart. OK, and I heard you mention before that we need two or more consecutive leads involved for an acute MI. Exactly. We're trying to take a look at a snapshot of something in two different leads or two different camera viewpoints. OK. So if we had an inferior infarct, which leads would be involved? So that would be 2, 3, and AVF. OK. What about a lateral infarct? Lateral infarcts are 1, AVL, V5, and V6. OK. And what about anterior septal? Anterior septal is going to be V1 and V2. OK. And lastly, what about anterior apical? Anterior apical infarcts are going to be V3 and V4. OK. I think I understand consecutive leads a little bit better. Let's talk about reciprocal changes. OK, now that we understand consecutive leads a little bit better, let's talk about the term reciprocal changes. So what does that mean, and why is that important? So reciprocal changes are basically looking at the ECG on the opposite side from where you're having the current of injury. And they're usually in the form of an ST depression. OK, so if we had an anterior ST elevation MI, we would expect a posterior change? Logically, that makes sense. But remember, your heart is irregularly shaped. So when we're talking about an anterior ST elevation, we're actually looking at the inferior portion for ST depressions. OK. And likewise, if you had an inferior MI, you would expect changes anteriorly? That's correct. So if you're having ST elevations in leads 2, 3, and AVF, you're actually going to be looking anteriorly for ST depressions in leads V1 all the way up to possibly V4. Oh, OK. And what about if you had an ST elevation in the lateral wall? So the lateral wall is a little challenging. There, in your standard 12 lead ECG, there's no great opposite side. OK. I think our patient earlier must have had an anterior STEMI. How did she do? She's actually doing really well. They were able to open up her coronaries, and she's recovering in the CCU. Great. Thank goodness we knew how to read EKGs well.